machine. Um, all of these procedures are available in the operating software. Um, I would also like to tell you that all of these procedures are downward compatible all the way to the Amaya red and whites. They will also work for Bravos. So um, items have changed throughout the years depending on what version of the operating software that you're running. We're going to be going off of the latest release of the version 11. So um, with that, let's go ahead and get started with what we're going to cover today. So we're going to go to our software, our operating software, and we're going to go to Tools, Settings, and then the Timers tab. This is what is going to prompt you and show you how to do all of the maintenances. One thing that's very critical is please make sure that the check mark for maintenance timers is enabled. Um, if this check, if this uh, box is not checked, you are not going to receive pop-ups in your operating software telling you that a maintenance is required. So please, again, make sure that maintenance timers are enabled so that you or your operators are prompted to do the maintenance when they are needed. Um, we are on the advanced side of the operating software. And if you'll notice, all the timers uh, for this particular are done by stitches. If we were on the UI so uh, side of the software, which I can show you real quick, all of the timers are set in daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, if I remember correctly. So here you'll say this one is your daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly. These all correspond to the stitch counts that we are going to be using on the advanced side. So it's the exact same lubrications. So I'm going to go ahead and get back over to the advanced side of the software. And the very first one that we are going to do is the rotary hook. So that is every 200,000 stitches, if I remember correctly. So we're going to go ahead and click on the step tab. And you're going to get a notice that please follow all maintenance procedures carefully and apply the proper amount of specified lubrications during each step. Um, Melco cannot be responsible if you're using if you damage the machine or the wrong type of lubrication. You're going to get this prompt before you do every uh, lubrication step. So I'm going to go ahead and click next. Again, we're telling you that you need to do the rotary hook every 200,000 stitches or four to five hours. Um, another one that I do personally is, is I just lubricate the rotary hook every morning before we start sewing. And next, so as you can see, you get a very good picture of what you need to do. So the first one is going to be we're going to come over here and do just like the picture says. And we're going to remove the uh, bobbin case out of the machine. We're going to click next. And it's telling us to take some canned air and go ahead and blow out any kind of the residual dust buildup that we get in the rotary hooks. And that happens just because of sewing. You get your Madeira oiler pin that is provided in the operator's kits that are sent with every embroidery machine. And as you can see from the picture that's on the software, you have a highlighted green area. Now, the rotary hook on the machine does not have this green area. This is just a highlighted area to show you where you need to apply the oil. So we'll come back to the machine, and we're just going to add a couple drops of oil. right to that area as it shows in the picture on the software. I'm going to go ahead and click next on the software. It's telling me to go ahead, reinstall your bobbin case. And 
And if I click next again, it's going to tell me that I have, complete, I have successfully completed this. Now, one thing I'd like you to notice is when we started this lubrication, our rotary hook was at about 133,000, I believe it was. Now we're back at 200,000. So every time you step through each one of these steps, it resets the timer on the machine. Um, rotary hook lubrication is very, very important. Uh, you can have thread break issues that are caused because of lack of lubrication on a rotary hook. So very, very important that you do your rotary hook lubrication. Our next lubrication is going to be the 20 million stitch, or 2 million, excuse me. I'm going to go ahead and click step. Again, we get the um, notification. Be careful. And what we are going to do on this is your needle drive and upper V-rail and needle bars. So we're going to go ahead and click next again. Again, we're just telling you, hey, be careful. Uh, remove any clamping systems or anything of that nature that you might have the machine. And next. So what the machine's going to do now is it automatically color changes over to needle 16 and it rotates the Z axis just a little bit. Um, the take up lever for number 16 is down a little bit. So right up on the upper left hand side of the needle case, um, there is a lubrication valley. Yeah, Justin, can you go to the software again real quick? Thank you. So that is what we're looking at on this embroidery machine. So on this lubrication valley, you're going to add 25 drops of oil. What that does is that lubricates what is called the reciprocator. And the reciprocator is the item that actually moves vertically up and down for the z-axis and drives your active needle up and down. So that's what you're lubricating on this particular step. Our next step is going to be the V-rails. So, so the V-rails are right where the oiler is showing. That rail is the linear hold or the linear movement for the needle case when it does a color change or a color change being the left and right movement of the needle case. All you're doing when you lubricate the V-rail is you're just wiping off the excess gunk and then uh, putting some of the sewing machine oil on the V-rail. So we go ahead and click next and your machine will automatically color change all the way over to needle number one to give you access to do the V-rail on the right hand side of the machine. So again, you're wiping off any excess uh, gunk or grime on there. And then you're also applying some sewing machine oil to this area of the machine. Our next part of this step is going to be the needle bars. So the needle bars are in, on older machines, red and white, XT and XTS, you do have to remove this cover. Let's go to one. You do have to remove this cover because you do not have these oil access holes. The reason that these access holes were added to this cover is because we have a thread dampener here now. Um, and if you go to take this cover off with this thread dampener, you unthread all of your needles. So it was easier to add the access holes. So when you're going through, you're coming through this little hole and you're actually lubricating each needle bar position one through 16. The oilers are designed size wise that they will fit right through these holes. They are in line where they line you straight up with the needle bar that you are lubricating. In the bottom of the needle case around in this area, there is what's called felts or oil wicks that actually hold the oil for each of the positions. So you only need one to two drops on each needle bar. 
the oil is going to run down the needle bar and then it's going to get captured in the oil wick. So you're going to want to do 1 through 16, all of the lowers. And then if we go to the software and we click next, you're going to be doing the upper needle bars. So the upper needle bars are right in these grooves for the take up levers. And if you look through these grooves, you're actually going to see the needle bars in there. So you're going to take your oil wick and you're going to come in at an angle and you're going to get, you're going to feel the needle bar in there. Again, you're going to do one to two drops of oil. In the needle case about at this elevation right here, there's oil wicks again to capture that oil to help keep the needle bars lubricated during a sewing cycle. One thing I would like to point out is when you're doing this lubrication and you're doing like 9 through 12, if you look through the slot right here, you're going to see a green printed circuit board. You want to avoid getting oil on that circuit board. So you need to make sure that you're getting the oil wick in far enough that you're actually getting the oil on the needle bar and not getting it on that printed circuit board. Now that you're done with the oil bar or the needle bars, there was a question that is, um, the instructions say to oil the front and the back of the V-rail, and it was just, can you point out what is the front and the back of the V-rail? Yes. Um, which is considered a fair for you to get a, a good camera on. Well, so you, technically cannot get the back side of the v-rail because the v-rail is attached but so it's called the v-rail because it looks like an upside down v like like this so you want to get the front side and the back side of the of the upside down v or the peak so if we go to our software we've now completed our needle bars we click next, we get the uh, indication, hey, you finished your 2 million stitch maintenance. Finish, and you'll notice that our timer, again, has reset itself. So while we're talking, a, a lot of these lubrications that require oiling, like we just did with the rotary hook, the V-rails, and the needle bars, is should be done even if you're not prompted because your machine has sat for a long time without use. Um, oil can dry up. The oil wicks can dry up. So if your machine has sat for a couple weeks because you were on vacation or had you know other circumstances, I would highly recommend that you do these two maintenances that we just went through before you start your machine back up again. Um, because sitting around is, you know, things get dry. So we're going to go to our software, and our next one is our 10 million stitch maintenance. We're going to go ahead and click on step. Again, we get the warning. We also get a, a list of what we're going to do. So we're doing X drive rails, Y bearing blocks, X cable tension, and grabber eccentric. Um, probably the one that's the most everybody probably forgets or doesn't do on this one is the grabber eccentric. And when we get to that one, we will spin our demo machine around backwards. And I might actually <laughs> pick up one of the cameras and show you exactly where we are talking about. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to click next. Again, we're telling you, hey, if you currently have a hoop or a clamping system on the machine, please remove it. So let me get a little back story of what this is, is that the X axis and the Y axis are going to move during these maintenance procedures. If you've got a clamping system or a hoop or something that is on the machine, um, Justin, can we go to the main camera, please? What can happen is while the X and the Y are moving, the clamping system or something can catch the bottom of your needle case here and it will yank the bottom of the needle case forward and it'll cause damage to your machine. 
Um, in most circumstances, that damage is not covered under the manufacturer's warranty. So that's something that you really want to pay close attention to when you're doing these maintenances. So let's go ahead and click next. And that was a perfect example of the X and the Y moving. So what it has done now is it's taken your Y axis all the way to the back and it's moved your X carriage all the way to the left. We're going to remove this black cap right here. And when we remove that black cap, that's going to give us access inside of what's called the X beam. So if I go to the software and I click next, this is going to give you a better picture of what you are lubricating. So up inside this X beam, there are two rails. The X axis slides on those rails left and right. So what we are doing is we're lubricating those rails. So you're going to go in and you're going to take a cotton cloth or an old t-shirt or whatever you've got and you're going to remove the excess grease off of those rails. And then we're going to click next and then we're going to apply the red HP grease to the rails. So we will reapply that all the way inside to the center of the machine as far as we can get front and back. We will go ahead and then we'll put our cap back on and we will click next. Now the X axis is sliding all the way to the right and we are uh, looking, Justin, can we go to the software again, please? Thank you. So now we're gonna remove the cap off of the left side of the uh, X beam. Again, we are gonna remove the excess grease off of the rails and then we are going to apply new grease. There is one area here that I would like to point out that you don't want to get any excess grease on. Hopefully you can see the mouse. And right in that area right there, there is a photo optic sensor. If you get grease on that photo optic sensor while you're doing this lubrication, you can cause the machine to get x-axis errors could be an X tracking error or an X timeout error. So that's just one area you want to watch out for when you're doing the grease. It does not need to be in the middle of the X beam at all. It's always on the front and back where you can see these rails right here. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to click next. The machine has now set itself to roughly hoop center. The machine is color changing over to needle number 16. And the reason that it's color changed over to needle 16 is, let's go software again please Justin, is we wanted to give you easy access to this front screw. Uh, let's go main camera please. Which is located right here on the machine to remove the silver covers or smoked covers or whatever you have on your machine for that particular model. Um, I've already come in and removed the covers off of this machine uh, for time consideration. But if we go to the software again, you can see that we give you a very good highlight of all four screws that need to be removed for that um, for this particular lubrication. What we are going to lubricate is the Y bearing block. Um, so let's go to this uh, camera too, Justin, please. Thank you. Um, we're on the opposite side of the machine, but they are the same on both sides. That's in this area right here. On top of this block, there is an oil access hole, which in the software, again, is highlighted in green. There's not green on the machine. That's just telling you, hey, this is the area that you need to lubricate. We're doing 25 drops of oil inside of there. Inside of this bearing block, there's also oil wicks again that will capture that oil. So that's why the lubrication is done uh, not as often as the other ones. 
So if we click next, we go back to the software. Again, now we're telling you to reinstall the cover on that side of the machine. We're going to go ahead and click next. The machine is color changing over to needle number one. And then if we go back to the software again, now we're showing you, okay, you need to remove the covers when you're facing the machine on the right side. So we will go ahead and click next. And again, this is just what we talked about earlier, going to this bearing block right here and doing the lubrication there. As part of this side is we are also having you check the X cable tension. So let's go to camera two, Justin, if we could. Um, in the operator's kits, I believe starting with XTS, um, the model preceding this, you get an X cable tension gauge. Gauge is very easy to use. Um, you hook the cable through these two little guys and in through here. If the cable falls within this larger cutout, your X cable tension is where it's supposed to be. Um, so what we're going to do is we will place this on the machine. And you can see that we are following, falling right within the cutout. Um, if we go back to the software, this, soft, this picture almost basically shows exactly what this machine is mimicking. So the cable falls right within that large cutout. Your X cable tension is correct. You don't have to worry about it. What's really nice, though, is if we click Next, we give you an in-spec and out-of-spec picture. So we're going to go ahead and say that we are out of spec. So I'm going to go ahead and click the out-of-spec tab. And here is a step-by-step -step procedure on how to tighten the X, uh, X cable tension. So if we go back to camera two, that area of the machine is right up here. You're going to see where the cable goes through the casting. There is a nut, and then on the cable itself, there is a, um, I guess you would call them flat sides, so that you could hold the cable. So if we go back to the software again, you can see this picture shows that very well. And then if we click next again, we're actually showing you exactly where and how to adjust the X cable. You're going to do this with the fixture or the tension gauge on the machine. And as you're tightening the cable, you will actually see that tension gauge move. And you just keep tightening until your cable is right in that large opening of the tension gauge and your X cable tension is set. So we're going to click next again. And it's telling us you need to remove the tension gauge because if we can go to the main camera, Justin, you'll see here that if you don't remove this gauge, you can cause damage to the machine because the software is going to move the X and Y all the way around to get that cable re reseated in all of its area. And then we'll put the gauge back on again to see if we're within spec. So when I click next right now, you'll notice that the pantograph on the machine is moving. So now it's doing the X from the left to the right. And then it's going to bring the Y forward and bring the X back to hoop center. So now it's telling us, OK, reposition your gauge, check your tensions again. If it falls within the large opening right here, camera two, if it falls right within this large opening, your tensions are correct. And we will go ahead and click next on the software. We get the same pop up again that asks us, are you in spec or out of spec? We're going to go ahead and say we're in spec. It's going to tell you to remove the tension gauge. And again, the same pop up. Hey, make sure you take the gauge off because if you don't, you're going to damage your machine. And our final step is to go ahead and reinstall our cover.
once we have our cover reinstalled. This is the Grabber Eccentric. I think this is one that um, a lot of people have issues with and don't really understand, which is no fault of anybody's because it's kind of a weird little area. So where this is, is can we go to camera one, Justin? So actually, I got to show too bad. We are on the back side of the needle case. This guy right here is the grabber motor. Now, if you look just to the left of the grabber motor, that is the area that is shown in the software for the grabber eccentric. Um, can we go back to the software view again? So what we have got is if I click next, there is a linkage that runs all the way from up here all the way down to the bottom of the needle, the needle case that actuates your grabber assembly in and out. We need to slide that linkage over to the left so that we can get grease on the gold part of where the uh, linkage actually rides on the eccentric. And that is what is shown in this picture that is up on the software right now. Uh, yeah, if we could, that wouldn't be. So uh, Nate's going to go ahead and bring this up, and I can bring the machine closer to yeah. you. And if we move this harness out of the way, yeah. right here is the area that we're talking about. You can see the gold eccentric part. So whenever I am doing even technical trainings and we go through this, technicians are even like, oh, you can, you know, so it's something I think that we really needed to address. Now, the grabber's used quite a bit on the machine. Every time the machine does an automatic thread trim, the grabber's going in and out. So that's an area that can get, um, that needs to be lubricated as well. Thank you, Nate. Yeah. So if we go to the software and I click next, it's actually showing a very nice blown up picture of where you are trying to, where you need to get the grease. Again, this is gonna be the red HP is what we are using. And that should complete our 10 million stitch maintenance. On the older machines, um, in your operator's kit, you have got a multi-purpose and then you've got a polymer. Uh, both of them are white. Every time that I'm referencing this red HP, that's going to be the multi-purpose grease that are in the older operator kits. Um, I don't believe that we sell that grease anymore. So if you do need to reorder for the multi-purpose, you're going to want to get the uh, red HP grease. That is the replacement for the multi-purpose grease. Um, back at the software, our final, uh, second to last step of the lubrications is the 30 million. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to click step. Again, we're getting our please follow maintenance procedures carefully. We're going to do our take up lever cam, our presser foot cam follower, right needle bar guide. Uh, and then we're all, oh, take up lever cam, presser foot cam, and left needle bar guide. So I'm going to go ahead and click next. Again, we're telling you, please do the removal of any hoops or clamping systems. The machine is going to automatically color change over to needle number one. And can we go to the main camera, please? So what we are going to remove is this front right black cover. So. These four larger screws are going to be a three millimeter bent Allen wrench. So we're going to go ahead and remove these screws. 
Uh, be careful not to drop them. If you're on dark colored carpet, they disappear quite easily. There is one screw on this cover that's kind of a booger. It's this top left that's buried in this inset, but it's not too bad. Also on this cover, you do have one more that's down here on the bottom left. That's going to be a 2.5 millimeter. Okay, if we go back to the software, we do show you that you need to rotate that cover up straight and then pull straight out to get it off. And our next step is going to be the take up lever cam. So you can see on the software, we give you a pretty good picture of the take up lever cam. If we go to camera, actually, let's try two, Justin. And where we are looking is in the machine, when you have this cover off, right back in the very back of the casting, you're going to see an item that looks like a black plastic circle. That is the take-up lever cam. You need to get that red HP grease on the back side of that take up lever cam and that's what on the software is trying to highlight the best in that picture as you can see the grease applicator is going on to the back side of that take up lever cam so this is a very critical measurement or excuse me lubrication um, it needs to be performed and it need you need to get the grease in the proper area now, if I remember correctly on some older versions of software that this was done a completely different way and we were having a lot of issues with the cams not getting lubricated correctly. So that is why we have now changed the procedure in the latest OS to do it this way. So if we go back to two, you're going to take your grease applicator and you're going to come in and you're going to make sure that you get your grease right on the back side of that take up lever cam. So if we go ahead and click next in our software, the next one that we're going to do is for the presser foot. So if we come back again to camera two, we are asking you to go ahead and raise the presser foot up. When you're raising the presser foot up, if you look into the casting of the machine, and we'll go to the software picture because it gives a pretty good picture of what you're looking for. Not to get really technical, but you've got what's called a presser foot cam follower. That is what you're putting the grease on, as you can see in that picture. But you have to raise the presser foot up in order to create. As you can see, when I raise that presser foot, if you look right about here, see that white part that's bouncing up and down? That's what you're separating from the cam follower. You're getting the grease in between the two areas. One thing that I'd really like you to be very, very careful of. When you're pushing this presser foot up, it's very easy to get it stuck on top of the clamp that holds the needle in. So you'll notice right now I have no presser foot. That's because it's sitting on top of that clamp. If you tried to rotate your Z axis right now, you're going to lock the entire machine up. It's going to get a Z timeout error. It's going to shut down and your software is going to flicker. It's going to make you think that you really, really damaged your machine. 
So when you're pushing that presser foot up, just make sure that you don't push it up so high that it sits on top of the clamp that holds the needle in. So we'll go back to our software and we're going to click next. And now we're telling you, okay, we need to reinstall this black cover. So if we go back to camera two, we're going to reinstall this black cover. So when we're reinstalling this black cover though, you don't want to get those five mounting screws tight, but they're not loose because we want the embroidery machine to set the position of this cover on the machine. We don't want to put this on there tight and have it maybe too high or too low because what will happen is when the machine goes to color change or the needle case goes to move, we can cause a mechanical bind in the machine. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to reinstall this cover. And I'm just going to get these screws. You don't, especially on these bottom ones, what I would do is I would take them tight and then just back them off. Because if you leave them too loose, what can happen is they stick out too far and they hamper the needle case when it tries to color change. Now these upper ones, they're in them countersunk, so you can uh, you can do those however you would like. So these screws are loose, so this cover has a little bit of up and down play in it. So when I click next on the software. Again, now this one I really want to talk about very, all the other warnings I've kind of just been skimming through. This one we're going to actually read verbatim. If you proceed without mounting the right upper arm front cover, damage to your machine will occur and a service call will be necessary. Melco will not re be responsible for any damage to the machine or related service costs caused by not performing this step. What this cover does is it has this groove in it right here. Each needle bar, so each needle position, 1 through 16, has a piece on it that's called the needle bar drive stud. When that needle bar is not being used, that needle bar drive stud rides in this cover and that's what holds it up into its neutral or head up position. If you don't have this cover on, when you click next, the needle case starts to move to the right and all of those needle bars are going to flop and drop out of the needle case. So let's go ahead and stay on this camera, Justin, while we click next so they can watch the needle case move. See how the needle case is moving across? If that cover was not on, all of the needle bar drive studs that are riding in this groove would now go plink, 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 and drop all the way out of the machine. And for that to be fixed is a service call and a technician's going to have to come out and uninstall and reinstall your needle case. So pay very, very close attention to those warnings, please. So what it has done is it's moved over to approximate, approximately needle 12. And that gives us access to these two outboard screws. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten those. And then we're going to click next again, which is going to move the needle case over. And now that has given us access to the three inboard screws.
So what we have done is we have let the needle case or and or the needle bars set the position of this cover. So now when it color changes, it's in its proper position that it's not going to cause any mechanical binds with the needle case. So now we're going to go ahead and click next. And what it's asking us to do is clean out grease and add some more red HP grease right in this channel right here. Now the machine's going to color change all the way over to the right or it's going to be on needle 16. You'll notice that it did rotate the Z axis. Our needle bar is down, our take up lever is down. And we're going to remove the four screws on the left side that hold the cover on for that. Again, this is a three millimeter out of your red bent Allen metric set that comes in the operator's kit of the machine. I am cheating and using a straight blade. Okay, so we have now got this access cover off and what we're going to lubricate here if we take a look at the software, there's removal of the cover, is the presser foot cam. Um, in the previous step I was showing you how we raised the presser up, the presser foot up so you could get to the cam follower. Now you're on the other side of the presser foot cam. And let's go to camera one, Justin. Is this guy brown piece right here? I like to describe it as kind of like a ski slope or a ski jump. Um, it always seemed where people were able to identify it. Um, all you're doing there is putting some, again, the red HP grease on that area. So if we click next, position the upper left arm cover in its original location, reinfall, reinstall the four mounting screws. Again, I'm going to click next. I want you to actually let's do that and then we will, I almost dropped needle bars. We will come across and we will show that warning again. about what can happen if this cover is not on. Again, get these bottom ones tight and then back them off about a quarter of a churn. You can do the same on the top two. Okay. Now we're going to go next on our software. And again, here's that warning. Same scenario that I described on the right side can happen on the left side. If you do not have that cover installed when you click next, you're going to cause yourself a service call. So let's go ahead and click next. If we go to the main camera, you can see the needle case moving over to the left. And it's going to give us access to the two outboard screws. So we've got those tight. We will click next. Machine's going to automatically color change. 
and that gives us access to the two inboard screws. One of the symptoms of these covers being set incorrectly after you do this lubrication is going to be a color change seek error or a color change timeout. What that is, is these covers are either too high, too low, or whatever it may be. When the needle bar drive stud goes to slide out of the reciprocator and right in this groove, it cannot because the up and down position of it is incorrect. So if we click next, again, we are doing this groove right here, cleaning out the grease, applying new HP grease. Right above the warning stickers is where that groove is. We have finished our 30 million stitch uh, lubrication. So now if we click finish, you'll notice on the software, our timers are, re are complete. The last part of lubrication total is all around the thread feed system or the thread feed rollers. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on feed rollers. And you're going to notice that it brings up a page that lists each needle position 1 through 16. What this allows you to do is you can just do the feed roller lubrication on the needles that you use most. So instead of going through and doing all the needles 1 through 16, I can look on here and you can see our values are, uh, it's not needed to be done. But if we were to say, hi, it looks like needle 9 on this machine and needle 11 are used the most. You've got uh, 29,074 stitches on 7, 63,5 on 9, and 103,798 on 11. So we can go through and just do needle 11 to do the lubrication. I'm going to go ahead and do step all just so that we can show you the pictures of what needs to be done on the machine. So again, you've got your warning. So again, this is walking us through all 16. I'm going to go ahead and just concentrate on needle one on the machine. Um, can we go to camera two? So what we are going to be looking at is we will go ahead and lift our pinch roller for our needle number one position, which the uh, instructions are telling us all 16. We are going to go ahead and remove this access cover. So if we look at this access cover, right at the bottom middle, there is like a little area for a screwdriver or your fingernail or something like that that will allow you to take this cover up and remove it from the embroidery machine. So after we have removed this cover, we actually want to remove what's called the thread feed wheel. Now on newer machines, if you look at the picture on the right, uh, we now provide a little removal tool. Um, anybody can purchase this removal tool. I believe it's on Shop Milko. Um, or you can do the picture on the left where you're using the, the screwdrivers as your pry. But with this cover off, you can see that we now have access to that white thread feed wheel, which is right here. So all you would do is take your little tool insert and that wheel rolls straight out of the thread feed. So if we go to the software and click next, 
what we are asking you to do is the valley where the wheel came out of. Uh, let's go to two again, please. Down in this valley here, you will see a pocket where the these spindles ride. You can see the spindle here and the spindle here. So we're just asking you to clean the excess grease out of that. And then we'll go to the software again and we're saying, okay, go ahead and clean off the spindles. Apply some uh, of the EMB polymer. That is going to be the uh, white grease that is provided in your operator's kits. So can we go to two, just so maybe we can see the label a little bit? That's all. So EMB polymer. It's the only place that you really use the EMB polymer. Everything else is HP. So if we go back to the software, we have, we have added uh, the grease there. And then we are going to reinstall our wheel into the thread feed assembly and reinstall our cover. So if we go back to camera two, in order to reinstall this wheel, as you can see, it has teeth on one side. You can put these in backwards. So always remember that the teeth are on the left. All you do is get it into the valley and then just kind of roll it into position and the wheel will drop right back into where it's supposed to be. Now when reinstalling this little cover though, there is a trick. Um, sorry about it if we're close, but on the top of this cover, there's a little tang right here. You've got to make sure that that tang is seated all the way back into the thread feed. If it's not, this cover will not snap down into position correctly. And cover is now reinstalled. If we go to the software, we're going to remove our pinch roller. Uh, if we go to two, all you've got to do to take the pinch roller off is they just snap right off and pull right out. So if we go next on the software, we're telling you to just go ahead and clean the excess grease off of the spindle that the pinch roller snaps on. Clean the pinch roller itself. Add a little bit of grease to the spindle. And on the inside of these thread feed wheels, there's three little tines that are shown very well in the picture. And you will add some grease to those. And then you just, let's go to two again, please, Justin. And you will just roll this right back into place and snap it on. So that is the lubrication of the thread feed. Um, older software programs do not give you the option of the breakdown like this one did where you can do it just needles. You have to do all 16. Um, Get your covers back on, thread your machine back up, and we have now finished our th uh, feeder lubrication. One of the symptoms of lack of lubrication, primarily with the pinch rollers, um, can we go to two again? Um, they're either going to be red or black. They're the 16 pinch rollers that are crossed here. Lack of lubrication of those is during sewing, the thread will slide out under the right side of the roller. What's causing that is lack of lubrication and the roller is stalling. So the white one that we took out underneath is still spinning, but the pinch roller stalls and it forces the thread out of the right side of the pinch roller and you'll get a thread break. So if you're seeing that on any kind of needle positions on your machine, very first thing I would do is lubricate these pinch rollers. So that completes the maintenances for your machine. Um, doesn't take very long to do. Um, please make sure that you do them. Um, hopefully you change the oil in your car. 
So you've got to think of your embroidery machine as the same thing. If you keep them maintenance, they're going to run for you and they're going to do what they're supposed to do. So thank you very much and have a good day.